Hey guys, and welcome to another Factorial Friday Facts, number 288, New Remnants, More Bugs. And uh, we are uh, here with the flick scene again. <laughs> sorry, I was reading. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, sorry. Okay, so, yeah, um, doesn't work to read and talk at the same time. Uh, two different things. So, uh, removing RTL language translation. So, unfortunately, they've had to remove the RTL language translations, uh, which are Hebrew and Arabic in this case, in version 17.20. Uh, they've kind of had them half implemented, where the text is simply flipped when we download it from Crowden. Um, this quote unquote works for a decent portion of things, but not nearly 100%. Um, but and so basically, in order to attain the level of polish they want, they had to get rid of it. Um, because they couldn't implement it properly, and it was just only, like, kind of implemented. So. Yeah, and then this this might be really basic information for those of you that already know it, but RTL here means right to left. Yes, good point. <laughs> um, yeah, so it the, the whole point here is that they optimized all their layout and uh, GUI stuff for left to right languages. Um, and they haven't spent nearly as much time on right to left. So at this point, they're removing support for it, uh, but still allowing you to set that language in the config files if you want it. Right. Uh, so that's pretty much this entire first section. Um, and then after that is interesting bug reports from our seating. So uh, this is actually fairly interesting here. Uh, years ago, when he was just getting into the programming field, he was told by others that someone typically starts in the QA bug tester positions, and if they prove themselves, uh, can move on to do the quote-unquote fun work. That implies that the QA bug tester positions aren't fun, and that I should look forward to being done with those tasks. It was 40 or 7 months and 8 days ago as of writing this that I asked Corex about possibly letting me help fix bugs in Factorio, and today bug fixing is my second favorite part of Factorio, with optimizations taking first place. Of course, optimizations are first place for our seating. Yeah, he is like the god of optimizations. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know if that, I mean, it's, I think maybe he's kind of a rare case because I've, I mean, I'm obviously not a developer, but I have heard that bug fixing is usually one of the least favorite tasks of developers. Um, it, it's true in my case that I, I am not quite as fond of uh searching for bugs as I am of writing code. Um, in my past, I did apply for a developer position at Blizzard, and they said that they would feel more comfortable putting me in a QA role first, and then prove myself and get up to uh, a developer role. Um, but since I already had development experience, I did not want to go to a QA role at that point. Right. Makes sense. Uh, so the weirder and more difficult a bug is to track down the more I enjoy working on it and finally seeing it resolved. Naturally, as I've spent so much time working on bug fixes in the same code base and always going for difficult ones, I've gotten quite good at it. One of the uh, fun parts of fixing the difficult bugs is putting the reproduction steps in the change log and watching people's reaction when they read the patch notes for that release. Some of the more interesting ones from 017 bug fixing so far. Uh, the game crash... Uh, the game would crash and bring up the escape menu and multiplayer while in the middle of using blueprints, deconstruction planners, then releasing the mouse button. So a very, very specific case that would actually cause this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, these, uh, these bugs are so obscure that uh, unless you were trying to reproduce one of them, you most likely would not run into them. Yeah. Um, another good example here is later down in the list, uh, the game would crash if or, or the game would crash when if you rejoin the multiplayer game that you lost connection from while the tips and tricks window is showing then yeah then the game would crash and this was from the automatic crash logs nobody actually reported this yeah <laughs> again a very another very specific kind of quirky one uh yeah and as a veteran player i don't have the tips and tricks window showing at all so i never would have encountered this but obviously new players would Right, exactly. Uh, and another one here, a bit further down in the second section, uh, ones that still haven't beaten, or they still haven't beaten the best ones, um, is uh, the game would crash when clicking restart from a running game if the new game happened to be created at the exact same memory address as the old game. Uh, that must have been a nightmare to find and debug 
especially because oh, it's a, one of the previous ones before they had the automated crash logs. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So it like been so the, hard. this is such a niche situation. Like it, the stars would have to align for this situation to happen to you. Yeah. So the fact that he found and fixed it is uh, is a miracle in and of itself. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, but yeah, so overall bug fixing is going well. We had a rough release earlier this week related to some GUI logic not working correctly. In the past, we've talked about our automated test system, right, FX186, which normally tests game logic. With the rough release earlier uh, this week, it pushed me to get the test system in a, sh uh, in a shape where we can run automatic graphic tests in hopes of avoiding the issues we had during the two broken versions. Uh, we still have a few small things to fix, but otherwise the automatic test system can now run full graphics interface while running the test. In parallel, just for fun, I set up, I set it up so it would arrange the windows in a grid. And uh, we're going to watch this video because uh, it's actually really cool. I muted the sound for YouTube reasons, but... Yeah, it, it was... Uh, when I heard it with sound or when I watched it with sound, it was uh, kind of jarring to hear all the different uh, instances of Factorio starting up at the same time. It was like the Factorio jingle in stereo. Yeah. Yeah, this is... Uh, so this is just completely automated, which is really cool, running all these graphical tests. Yeah, and you can see it uh, across almost everything, it's trying to get every single animation, every single sprite uh, on screen and tested. Mm -hmm. Which is not, so they can just like let this run pretty much, and it will uh, find any issues that it encounters. Yeah, pretty much. And then on the subject of the uh, the multiple releases they had to do earlier in the week, uh, I remember seeing on Colonel Will's Discord uh, they kept posting when the new version was released. With the third one, they said, "And the hat trick version, yeah, uh, version twenty two. <laughs> Yeah, like three in a row in one day. Yep. It's pretty crazy. Um, so that's all the bug stuff. Uh, now some new stuff that's being implemented. So new remnants for almost everything. Uh, since forever, when killing an entity, we used generic remnants with a few exceptions, walls, rails. We only cared about the size of the entity, and, and it is done. Um, so yeah, like if you shoot a power pole uh, or whatever, it kind of just turns into generic remnants. Uh, and this is an okay solution, but we want more specific and natural remnants so it is possible to recognize which entity was destroyed. That's not really super necessary because ghosts are normally providing us some information, but we are polishing the game and making everything nicer when possible, so we start experimenting with the small electric poles. Which uh, I really like. So that they, like, I yeah, guess these get look attacked, cool. or you kill them. Yeah, there's all these different ones. That one on the top left looks like it was chopped down like a tree. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> or potentially hit by a car. Um, your car? Yeah, my car. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely my car. I always hit up. Um, so this is this is really neat. Uh, they realize how simple things can become. Comp they realize how simple things can become complicated in no time with Factorio. For starters. Old generic remnants are very flat because the character can walk on top of them and they have no collision box. Also, they are moved from object layer to corpse layer, which is rendered under it. Now that we want more specific and custom remnants for entities, sometimes we need to grow in the z-axis, which can result in something like this, where it's like behind the accumulators pretty much, or under yep. them. <laughs> That's not realistic at all. No. <laughs> uh no big deal we just need to keep the remnants in the object layer and everything is solved the new problem is the sorting of the object layer factorial renders the objects from top to bottom from left to right meaning the objects on top are covered by objects below them and objects on the left are covered by objects to the right so we need to be very careful with remnants invading tiles not assigned to them this makes the composition more difficult because this can happen <laughs> which uh i think is actually really cool um that the power pole yeah. basically fell on resting it. on the accumulator. Yeah, I mean, I think that's acceptable. <laughs> yeah, it's just taking a nap. Yeah. Uh, so in this case, we were lucky because this looks nice, exactly. But in other direction, uh, we wouldn't be so lucky. Uh, with more heavy heavy remnants like nuclear reactor or oil refinery, we're not going to have this happen 
happy accident anymore. Of course, you will try to make these happy accidents possible with any setup, but allow me to, uh, but allow me to be skeptical in this regard. No big deal again. We just uh, stay in our assigned tiles and we're safe, but our chaotic composition of deconstruction starts to be pretty much like an IKEA assembly kit, everything in place almost as it was before, uh, but we still have this Z-axis, let's use it. I remember that the player can walk through it and remnants don't have collision boxes. It's going to be really weird seeing the player literally ignoring the phys physicality of the world. Uh, one potential solution proposed was to add a collision box to the remnants so we avoid this nasty visual effect. This solution seems nice from the beginning, but it touches so many aspects of the actual balance of gameplay that we dismissed it. We are still experimenting with it and trying to find the best approach uh, in between all these limitations. Hopefully they'll find a proper solution. Uh, yeah. However, this uh, reading through this, I'm like super excited uh, once they add in the remnants for the big things, like the reactors and refineries. I think that's going to be super cool. Yeah, that's going to look really cool. I might destroy a couple of my nuclear reactors just to see what it looks like. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and also, if they're like... Because I think in the map editor, you can place remnants, maybe? Um, if you can, once they implement the new ones, it would actually be super cool because you could make them like permanent things on a map and, and just make like a custom map where it just looks like a completely like abandoned, run-down, broken-down factory. That would be cool. Yeah, I think that would be awesome. But, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the Friday facts. Uh, pretty cool. Some really interesting, crazy, unique bugs. Um, cool to see the tester and the new remnants are looking super good. So hopefully they get the issue solved that they're uh, working against. Yeah, some of those uh, bugs are really, really obscure. I, I encourage you to read through it. it. It's pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, I think that's going to do it, guys. You got anything else to add? Uh, no, this is really good. Cool. All right. Leave your thoughts and stuff below and on the forums if you uh, want to. And until next time, we will catch you later. See ya.